Hey everybody, welcome to Fit Tip Tuesday. I hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving. We definitely did here. Today I am putting a cap on my Top Down Center Out Pants Fitting Series. Um, if you remember, when I kicked it off, I was talking about how I'm in the camp that if something is a good method and it's working for you, or if something is working for you, it's a good method for fitting. There's a lot of different ways to achieve the fit you're looking for. For me, Top Down Center Out was almost like the missing link I needed. Those of you who've been following along with me know that I have been trying to come up with the easiest way to fit pants for students. And looking at Top Down Center Out really opened my eyes to adding to the top of the pattern and balancing the leg where I was originally working with the crotch down lower to achieve the same thing. I do want to stress that all the pants fitting methods or things that I did before Top Down Center Out worked. I got really good results with my private pants fitting students um, in classes. I've taught a lot of pants fitting, but I think what Top Down Center Out does is it streamlines the process because if you start by balancing the front leg to the back leg and getting the crotch at the right level and getting the inseam and everything hanging straight, through that five-step process, it makes any other adjusting that you have to do easier. So you may be wondering why I'm putting a cap on my Top Down Center Out series. Um, you may have noticed that when I share things about Top Down Center Out, I've been sprinkling my little J Stern design tips or tricks into it. And Ruth Collins, who designed Top Down Center Out, has so much more she wants to share with you guys. I don't want to muddy the water or confuse the issue by talking about Top Down Center Out when I'm also changing it and doing other things with it. So this is the beauty of pants fitting. There are so many ways to do it that you can, um, you know, pick and choose what works for you. So that's basically what I'm going to be doing. And I'm going to be continuing with a separate waistband and a one leg muslin to start my fitting process. But I'm going to focus on draping the fabric onto your body and then combining it with some traditional pants fitting once you've got the front and back leg balanced. So I want to be really clear here, top down center out is not a draping method. And if you want to learn Top Down Center Out, let's say that you're watching me for the first time and you haven't heard of it before or you're curious and you haven't started, definitely check out my series. And then also head over to The Crooked Hem. I'll put a link to her series in the description below this video. The Crooked Hem's series of Top Down Center Out tutorials um, stay true to what Ruth intended for her method. So if you'd like to check that out, definitely go check that out. She did a wonderful job. Um, I haven't watched all her videos, but I do know um, that she's done an amazing job. I did check out a few of them in the beginning when I was learning how to do this method myself. So check her out. So in addition to going to visit um, The Crooked Hem, definitely check out Ruth's Instagram. It's at Ithaca Maven. I'll put a link to her Instagram in the description below as well. She has a lot of information on her Instagram, lots of tips and tricks, lots of um, different ways to think about pants fitting that I think are very, very cool. So definitely go check out her as well. I mean, I know I'm excited to see what else she's going to come up with. So we'll have to all wait and see. But I am, you know, I am forever grateful for her. Um, she's been so generous uh, to help me and, um, you know, I just can't express enough how fabulous I think she is. So having said all of that, I am going to tackle one more topic, top down, center out, and that's how to fit jeans. Now jeans are complicated by the fact that you have a yoke and a back leg in the back and you have a single front leg piece in the front. All right, we're going to look at the front leg first because that's the easy one. All 
the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add, I'm just going to add an inch to my side seam. You can add, you know, as much as you think you need, depending on your pattern. Um, sometimes I have my students add two inches, sometimes an inch and a half to the side seam. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to add an inch all the way down. All right, so there is my completed front jean leg. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that aside, and I'm going to get my back leg over here. Now the back leg is a little bit complicated because we have a back leg and we also have a back yoke. So the yoke sews to the back leg and then the top of the yoke sews to the waistband. Now the yoke actually is created by rotating waist starts to the side seam. So the interesting thing here is I'm going to cut the bottom edge of my yoke out here, just so you can see. If we look at this, if I line up my yoke, and I'm going to line it up at the stitching line here, you can see here, there's the dart, the difference between the curved edges at the side seam. So the dart is rotated to the side seam, and because we're adding extra to fit the jeans top down, center front, center back first, and then out to the side, center out, we may want to change the position of that dart along the side seam. So here's how I'm going to prep my jean pattern for top down, center out. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my side seam edge of my yoke with the side seam edge of my leg and I'm going to line up the actual stitching line here like this. That's going to allow me to do the wedge that I did in the front to straighten it out. But notice the top of my wedge is actually over here on the yoke. It's not on the top of the leg, it's on the top of the yoke. So I want to make sure I add the right amount so it all fits together. So instead of using a pencil at this point, I'm going to use my tracing wheel and I'm basically going to just trace along my ruler here to straighten this out and then I'll be able to see what I added by my tracing wheel so this part is going to be to here like this and then it continues I'm going to start it here and then I'm going to just connect it up I know it's hard to see because you can't see my little dots that my tracing wheel did, but basically this is my little wedge now. Okay, so basically it looks like that. So if I put it together, you know, it's going to fit together like, like that. Okay, so there's my wedge. I'm just going to color it in so you can see. So there's some added there, and then there's some added down here. Okay, so here's my wedge. Okay. All right, so now that I've straightened out my side seam, the next step is I need to add. Now, remember, traditionally top down, center out, you add to the top of the waistline. We're not going to add the entire four inches to the top of the, of the yoke because that would push it way down past um, uh, the small of our back where it needs to fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add three inches. So three quarters of the total amount are going to go right on my back leg. So there's three inches there. And I think I have three inches here. And I'm just going to connect it like this. Okay. So there's my three inches for the back leg, and I'm just going to continue my center back seam here. Okay. Then I'm going to add one inch to the top of my yoke. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I may want to raise or lower the yoke a little bit 
or I may want it, it may look better if it were a little bit wider or a little bit narrower. So this gives you the opportunity to play with the shape of the actual yoke if you wanted to. But I just wanted to put a little insurance there at the top of the yoke. So basically what I'm going to do here is, is I'm just going to add my one inch. And because it's curved, I'm just going to dash it in like this. So now the beauty of this is my front and back side seams are going to match because I added the, the same amount vertically. Um, so even though I added one inch to the top of my yoke and three inches to the top of my leg, I've still added four inches like I did in the front. And then of course, the other thing I want to do is add that inch of safety seam allowance along the side of my pattern. And I'm going to have to add that to the yoke as well. I can see I ran out of paper, so I'm just going to going to add it to the leg first. Let me just finish adding. All right. So there's my safety 1 inch allowance there. And of course, it has to go all the way to the top, so... Alright, so I'm just going to stick a little paper here so I can finish the side seam over here. So the original was to here, and then I'm going to add my inch. Okay. All right, so there is my completed back leg. Let me cut that out. Okay, and then the back yoke. The last thing I have to do to my yoke is just add that same safety seam allowance to the side seam edge of my yoke. So don't forget, it's a little piece. You want to make sure you're adding the same amount. So over here, I'm going to add that one inch as well. Okay. All right, so when I was in Jacksonville teaching jean fitting, I had almost 20 ladies in the room, and I was able to experiment with the best way to use top-down center out to fit jeans. And this is what I came up with. Adding the four inches to the front leg at the top of the waist like you would and then splitting up what you're adding to the back leg to make it even. So I added three inches to the top of the leg itself and one inch to the top of the yoke. So the next step is to cut out our single leg muslin and sew it together. We know we have three inches of extra vertical length on the leg. That's okay. We're going to fit it almost the exact same way as if it were at the top of our waist. Right, so let's take a look at the one leg muslin now. All right, so here is my muslin all cut out and sewn together. So I basically treated it like any other top down center out single leg pant muslin in the back. I sewed the seam between the yoke and the top of the leg. And for the purposes of fitting now, I'm gonna press that up. Normally it presses down and it becomes a flat felled seam. But for fitting, I'm just gonna push it up and out of the way. The next thing I'm gonna do is I am gonna position the original edge of the um, pattern with the seam allowance on the waistband. So this means I'm pinning it on, okay, and it's securely on there now so I don't have to fiddle with it. So after we do the, you know, center front, center back, top down fitting, 
and then move out to the side seam, we can play with the final position of the top of the back yoke. But for now, I just wanted to get rid of the extra that I added, that extra inch. I wanna have it here for insurance, okay? So then the next step is, I'm gonna use my ditto form to show you this. I am going to put the leg on like this, and I'm gonna wrap I'm going to wrap my waistband around and get that shut. Now at the center back, you want to make sure that your center back is in the center back of you. Okay, so I've got my center back with the center back. Okay, and you can see here that the yoke is attached. It's attached on the back waistband. From the front now, I can bring up my, my center front and I'm just going to work with it the same way I would work with any other pants pattern in the front. So we're going to start out by adjusting where the waistline is at center front. So let's say we like it right here. I'm just going to pin it onto the waistband at center front at that height. Then. I'm gonna look in the back. Now I tested this on myself. With a two mirror system, you'll be able to look at your back view here and pick up the amount that you need to get that leg to hang straight. So you're basically gonna be picking it up right below the yoke seam. So right here, okay? So basically what you're gonna do is you're just gonna pick it up and you can put a pin in there and then you can fine tune it when you, when you get it off of your body, you know, if it's uneven. But basically, you can see here, I'm just picking up to get the back in the right position, okay? And I'm looking to make sure my hem is parallel to the floor and my inseam is hanging straight. Okay, so I've got that right there. I think you can see it from the side. And then I'm going to start working my way towards my side seam. Okay, so this is where I can start to, before I deal with pinning up my side seam, I can continue that pleat right around to my side seam here. Okay, and then when I get to my side seam, you know, I can pick up and adjust the front from the top of the waist like I did, you know, do traditionally with top down center out. So you don't have to pleat out in the middle of the front leg because you can pick it up and down from the waist. But in the back, what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you're adjusting your side seam right here, pinching it out in equal amount. So like, let's say I had to pick it up that much to get it to hang properly, okay, then I can adjust my side seam to match. And basically whatever I pinch out here is gonna be sticking above in the front over here. So basically now I'm just going to pin that, get it the way I like. This will also allow me to pin my side seam shut and get the fit of that correct. Okay, and so now you can see I fit the front, I fit the side, and I also fit the back by, by picking it up right below the yoke seam. That eliminates the necessity to try to pin the top of the back leg to the bottom of the yoke. Um, I found that very fiddly. I couldn't do it accurately. And some yokes are really more of an extreme angle. You know, they're, they're lower at the center back and they come up towards the side seam. So not having to deal with pinning on an angle, I think, is makes it easier. Okay, so let's say this is what I like. Like I took it off, I checked it, everything is hanging right. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a few more pins in here. And then I'm going to take it off 
So if you're working at home, you would take this off of your body. Okay, and let's look at it on the table. So the first thing I'm going to do is, let's, let's look at the side seam. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark my side seam. So if it's not exactly on the pin, I had to come in just a little bit here. So I'm just going to mark my new side seam where the pins are, like this. Okay, then I'm going to feel for the top of my Velcro because we want to get that position and I'm going to mark that. So I'm basically just feeling for the top of my Velcro. You can see in the front I had to add more. See at the center front I added almost three inches to the rise of these jeans. Okay, and then in the back, let's look in the back. I am going to mark, well I don't have to mark the top of my Velcro because I pinned the top of the original yoke there. So that dashed line is where that half inch is, so I don't have to worry about that. But I do want to mark, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the pin on both sides of my pleat. And I'm just going to mark it across like this. And what this is going to allow me to do, oh wait, also let me, let me just mark my, my back had to come in a little bit more than my front. Okay. All right. So then let me just unpin this so I can get into here. So here, I'm just going to pin both sides, I mean, um, mark both sides of my pins. All right. Now I can take all the pins out. And I can open it up. So we can see here very easily how we need to adjust the back leg now. What we're going to do is we're going to measure from here to here. So that's an inch and a half. So I have an inch and a half here. I have an inch and a half there. And that's an inch and a half too. So I basically had to pick up the back leg an inch and a half in this example. It may be different across the back when you try it on yourself. But then let's just see something here. So here is in the front. Let's measure this. All right, so that's two inches. So I have a little bit of a discrepancy here. I'm taking off two inches in the front, but I'm only taking off an inch and a half here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my side seams even and I'm going to test it. So I'm going to make my side seam adjustment two inches so it agrees with the front leg. So what you can do now is you can actually pin this back up accurately so I'm taking out a full two inches on the back side seam to the inch and a half across. Sew that across sew up your side seam and try it on again with the waist securely pinned to the level you had it at when you did your fitting. That can be your test. So once you've double checked to make sure the side seams agree and you're happy with the amount you're removing, then what you're going to do is you're going to take your pattern. Right? So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to even though I pleated it out down here within my pattern, I'm going to mark it up at the top, okay? Because the paper isn't going to know that I did that. So basically, I've got two inches at the side seam. And then by the time I get over here, it's an inch and a half. So I'm going to mark an inch and a half over here. And then basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to connect those two like this. And that's going to get you really close. This wedge is really close to what you pinned out within the back leg. So I can cut this off and that will be all set. Now on my yoke, in the back, technically we added a half an inch, right? Because this is the top edge of the pattern. So if I liked this level or the, the vertical length, 
then I'm going to need to actually add a half an inch to the top of the yoke for a seam allowance because the blue line here represents what I pinned to the seam allowance on the waistband. So I'm going to add that in. Now, of course, you can play with it and you could pin the top of your yoke to the stitching line of your yoke if you want to and then let it back down if you need to. Either way, it doesn't matter. As long as you know what you're doing and what the end result is, you're fine. So here is the extra half an inch that I need, right? So I'm going to cut that off right there so that finishes the back of the pattern. And then in the front, we're simply going to measure what we pinned out. Now, at the side seam, I know it's two inches, so I'm going to mark my two inches. And then at the center front, I only have, or we can measure down here from the original to where I um, pinned. That's one, two, three and a half inches. So I'm going to measure here from the original edge up three and a half. And basically, my front is going to look like this. Okay, so you can see, in, in this case, I had to add a lot more vertical length um, to get it to sit at my waist on my ditto form. So that's technically not accurate because the crotch on my ditto form is not anatomically correct. So I probably added a little bit more length than if I had done it on my own body. But I just wanted to show you that now we've got that marked, we're all set. You know, and then of course you're just going to go in and adjust your little side seams. You can see here, you know, we just, in this case, I literally, you know, just took it in. This, this blue line right here represents the half an inch from here. So I basically just need to come in. I can measure from my paper edge to my stitching line up at the top, which is, I mean, it's practically what it was. I might leave that until the next fitting, but it's basically like, well, we'll say it's one and three quarters. So I'm just going to measure in one and three quarters. So it's about here. So that's where the top of my waist was. So I would just, you know, draw that down. So it was barely an adjustment, but you can make all of those adjustments like you would top down center out. All right, so that's how I would work with a jeans pattern using top down center out um, to make it easy for you to, you know, pick up that center back edge. Just do it right below the center back um, and the seam between the yoke and the leg. And then keep in mind you have that little bit of wiggle room at the top of the yoke that you can adjust up and down as well if you need to. But I think because you want to start somewhere, pin the yoke to the waistband before you put it on, aligning up your center back. So just to look at it one more time, you can see here I matched the stitching line, which is right here, with the actual center back of my waistband right there between my two Velcros. Okay, and then that's on there, so you don't have to worry about that fiddling around, but you can take that off and make some fine-tune adjustments after you get it close by playing with the vertical length down here. So that would be my take on how to work with a jeans pattern, top down, center out. If you have any questions or comments, um, please post those below and I will help you. Remember to head over to Ithaca Maven on Instagram and send her some love and keep track of what she's doing because if you're interested in this topic, I will tell you, I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure she's going to have more exciting things to share with us. So, you know, keep your eye on her. Going forward, I'm still going to be working with a separate waistband and a single leg muslin to start the fitting process. Um, but I'm also going to be sprinkling in more of traditional pants fitting things that I feel will make it easier, especially as your leg starts to get more slim fitting. So um, please let me know if you have any questions or comments. I'm really excited about um, my pants future. I am working on a new pants pattern right now, 
and I'm also going to be doing man jeans. So 2023 is going to be the year of the pants and jeans for me. So super excited. And I really thank all of you for following along with me. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Going to New York tomorrow. Join me during FabFit Friday this week at 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time to see what I scored at the Garment District. Super excited. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a lovely rest of your day.